Welcome to the last lesson of Chapter 11. This is 11-5 on graphing nonlinear functions. So in tonight's lesson, you're going to be able to graph quadratic functions, and you're also going to be able to graph cubic functions. Now, we're going to go ahead and get started. And we're going to start with the whole idea of nonlinear. Well, when we talked about linear functions previously, it always ended up being a straight line. So we're not going to have straight lines in tonight's lesson. All right, so the first part is talking about quadratic functions. When we talk about a quadratic function, it's when that input variable, so usually x, all right, that's what we usually put into a table or function, is squared. And we write it in this form. Y is equal to, if there's a number in front of it, times x squared. So n is just a constant number. All right, so here, for example, they get the quadratic to the right is y is equal to, or the same as x squared. What do you notice about this graph? All right, I want you to write down a couple things you notice. Try to write down maybe two things that you notice about it. All right, and when you're done, come back and just see um, if you had some of the same things that I had. So go ahead and pause me now and just make a list. All right, so some things you may have noticed. Well, one, it's not a straight line, it's U-shaped. So when we talk about X squared, it usually looks like a U. And this one, we only hit positive numbers. You can have x, so x can be negative. But y, it seems, is positive. Now, that can change, however, if this was y equals a negative x squared, or the opposite of x squared. If this situation was true, then it would just point downwards. All right? Um, something else you may have noticed, let's see, it starts at the origin, 0, 0, and on this one it does, because again, the number in front of here, they don't show, is a 1. So 1 times x squared would just look like this, and it would start at the origin. All right, let's go, let's go ahead and just try to graph one of these. So in order to graph the quadratic, what we have to do is first make a table of values, and then from there we plot them on a coordinate plane, and then we connect the dots, and that'll show us what it looks like. Now, it's very important that your table has positive and negative values, because sometimes the graph can do crazy things, or you'll lose half the graph if you don't. So for the function, y is equal to the opposite of x squared plus 1, make a table with integer values of x from negative 2 to 2, then graph it. So here we want us to make a table. So we can start with x. Then I'm going to put in the function y is equal to the opposite of x squared plus 1, and then whatever pops out for y. So, and they tell us, start with negative 2, and we have to go all the way to 2. So they want us to do five different numbers here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in. So the opposite of negative 2 squared plus 1. Well, negative 2 squared is 4, so, but that's the opposite. So it's negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Right? And you could graph it right away, or you could just do it at the end. I'm kind of a fan of doing all my points on a graph at the end. So here I have the opposite of negative 1 squared plus 1. Well, negative 1 squared is 1, but the opposite of it is negative 1. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Then I have 0, so the opposite of 0 squared plus 1. Well, 0 squared is 0, and 0 is negative positive or negative. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Then I have the opposite of 1 squared plus 1. Well, 1 squared is 1, but it'd be negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Here I have the opposite of 2 squared plus 1. 2 squared is 4, but the opposite of it is negative 4, so negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. There we go. I have my points. So now I graph them. So first I have negative 2, negative 3. So I go negative 2 to negative 3. There's a point. Then I can do negative 1, 0. Let's see, then I can do 0, 1. Then I have 1, 0. And then I have 2, negative 3. And look at that. I get these points. So it ends up being a downward facing U that starts at 0, 1. All right, or it has its vertex. That's what you call that point right there on the Y axis. It's a vertex. All right, so there we go. Um, for the function y equals 2 times x squared, make a table with integer values of x from negative 2 to 2, then graph the function. I'll go ahead and do this one, and when you're all done, come back and check your answer. So pause me now. Alright, and if 
if you're working on this. Let's see what we get. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. They tell us to use those same numbers, and then I'm just going to go ahead and put those in. Now remember, order of operations, you start with exponents, then you multiply. So negative 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. All right, 2 times negative 1 squared, well, negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. So 2, 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0. All right, 2 times 1 squared, well, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. And then 2 times 2 squared, well, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. There we go. We have our point, so now we graph negative 2, 8, so that's going to be about there. Negative 1, 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, and then 2, 8. And then we connect the point and we get this uh, quadratic. And this one's a little bit thinner, but that's the 2 times the x squared. Alright, so that's the first half of the lesson. We talked about how to get quadratics. Make a table, plot the points. The same idea occurs with cubic functions. And well, when you hear the word cube, that tells us what we're going to do. This is when you take that input value of x and you cube it or raise it to the third power. And this is the form you usually see. Y is equal to, if there's some number in front of it, times x cubed. Now this is what they generally look like. This is y equals x cubed, so 1 times x cubed. And looking at it, you can see, well, you get some negatives in the third quadrant, you get some um, positive values in the first quadrant. And it doesn't make this fun shape. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and get started right away by making a table. And again, it's no problem to do the exact same numbers they had to do before. So we could do negative 2 to 2. So, we need to put our x, our 2x cubed up there, and then see what pops out of y when that happens. So again, I'm going to just list those numbers, and let's see what happens. So, 2 times negative 2 cubed. Well, negative 2 cubed, well, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. Alright, then we do the same here. 2 times negative 1 cubed, well, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, times negative 1, again, to make it cubed, is negative 1. So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Okay, 2 times 0 cubed, well, 0 cubed is 0, times 2 is 0. 2 times 1 cubed, so 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, times 2 is 2. And then here, 2 times 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. Alright, so we go ahead and graph these. Now you have to excuse me because these numbers right here are off my graph. Alright, I can't do much with that. So I'm just going to start with what I do have. Negative 1, negative 2, 0, 0, and then I have 1, 2, and then again, this would be, let's see, 2, 16, which would be way up here. And then this one would be way, way down here, oops, yeah, at negative 2. So then you go ahead and just do it. And you'll notice that you do get those curved little lines. There you go. That would sort of be what our graph looks like. Now we have this one, which is going to be even more fun. Graph the function y is equal to 3 times x cubed. So again, go ahead and make your table of values, and when you're all done, come back and check your answer. So pause me now. Alright, let's go ahead and graph this one. So x, 3x cubed, and y. So if I put negative 2 in, cubed, I get negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. So I get negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Let's see, 3 times 0 cubed is 0. 3 times 1 cubed is 3. And then 3 times 2 cubed is 24. Alright, and again you do the same idea. Let's see, I'm going to start with the ones that are in my graph. Negative 1, negative 3, 0, 0, and 1, 3. 
And then again, these are going to be way, way off the graph. So that would be, if I'm lucky, right up at that point. And then negative 2 would be 24, probably somewhere down there. So we go ahead and just graph that. And again, that's a very rough draft of what it would look like. So we've talked about quadratics and we talked about um, cubic functions. Now we can use a graph of a function to also estimate problems or solutions to different problems. So here, the function a is equal to 12 times x minus x squared, where x is width in meters, gives the area a of a pond in square meters. Graph the function. And then it says use the graph to find the width that gives the greatest area. All right, so taking a look at this one, we're probably going to want to go ahead and make a table of values first. And that's going to give us the area of A. So we go ahead and put this in, and let's see. I guess we can start the same idea. So 12 times negative 2 minus negative 2 squared. So negative 2 squared is 4, and then that would be an... You know what? I just realized we're talking about the area of a pool. They're never going to be negative. So I don't have to start with any negative numbers. I can start right with 0. So 12 times 0 minus 0 squared is equal to 0. I can do 1. So 12 times 1 minus 1 squared. So 1 squared is 1. So that would be 11. Go ahead and do 2. 12 times 2 minus 2 squared. So I get 24 minus 4. It's 20, I do 3, so 12 times 3 is 36, minus 3 squared is 9, so 36 minus 9 is 27. I'm going to move that out of my way. Let's see, I can do 4, so 12 times 4 is 48, minus 4 squared, which is 16, is 32, and I could just keep on going if I wanted to. Or I can start trying to graph it now. Now, the, I didn't give you a coordinate plane this time around, you may have noticed. But again, that's because we only really need the first quadrant. All right? Because again, it's the area of a pool. So x is considered the width of that pool in meters. And I'm going anywhere from 0 on. All right? And then, let's see. A is equal to the area of that pool in square meters. And that one, well, it starts at zero, but it goes up pretty quick. So I might go by, <laughs> um, let's see, how about five fives? Okay. So then I can go ahead and plot the point. Well, 0, 0. Let's see. 1, 11. 2, 20. 3 is 27. 4 is 32. There we go. And we end up with something that looks like that. Oops. Except that's not a very terrific looking graph. And it's hard to know what's going to keep happening there, so maybe you want to continue. I'm okay with that. So you could do 5. So 12 times 5 minus 5 squared, so 60 minus 25, and you get 35. So I did have that about right. And then you could do 6. So it's 12 times 6 is 72, minus 36, and you get about 36. And you'll start notice that it goes up very slow at that point. 12 times 7 is 70, or 84, excuse me, minus 7 squared, which is 49, and you get 35, which actually goes back down. So if you keep doing it, it goes up, then it kind of decreases again. So at 7, and my graph was all off. My apologies. There we go. So when we did 6, we had, okay, 12 times 6 minus 36, and that 36. So yet at the highest point, it was 36. That was what the area was. And that was at the width of being 6. 
meters. There you go. So then you can estimate if you can tell that way. Otherwise, just keep going through until you get the highest point. That's what I ended up doing. So that's our lesson for tonight. Tonight we talked about how to graph nonlinear functions, so those quadratics and those cubic functions. Have a great night. See you in class tomorrow.